Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsene Zavall, and in this video we're going to continue our look through some of the options that you've got in Machine Tools. And in this tutorial we're going to focus on the SmartVert tool. So in the last video I already mentioned that Machine Tools is very useful because you get this pie menu where you can change from vertex to edge to face really quickly. And I said what's great about that is it also frees up the 1, 2 and 3 key. Now if I go to Edit and Preferences and come to Machine Tools, the two key is focusing on this, the Smart Edge tool. So if you want to use this, you need to have that selected and then save preferences as always. Now, this is a bit tricky to go through because there's so many different things it can do just with the two button. So I'm gonna go through this in a sort of order. So the most simple one to look at is just looking at the vertices. If I go to vertex mode, if you've got no vertices selected or one vertex selected and you press the two button, you are gonna activate the knife tool. And that'll work like the knife tool, just as standard does. You click, draw your line, and if you press C, you'll activate cut through, and then you can cut all the way through. Don't forget to hit enter. So just the same as every other knife tool. Control Z to undo that. Now that's really nice just because it means that you don't move your hand across to the other side of the keyboard. So it means that everything's gonna be easy to do and you don't really have to look where you're going. Now, the other thing that's good about this is that the guys at Machine Tools seem to have worked out that, well, the knife tool is actually basically the same as another tool. If you think about it, and I go into vertex mode, two for the knife tool and click from there to there and hit enter. Well, what you've really just done is just join two vertices together. And they've basically said, well, you might as well also be able to do that with the two keys. So if I select two vertices and hit two, you're going to join those together. Again, stopping your hand having to go to the other side of the keyboard. Now what's even cooler about this is that if you select more than one vertex, so for example, like this, and press the two key, what that will do is that will join them up in the order that they were selected. Again, you could do this with the knife tool, but what's really nice about this is the knife tool can be a pain if you make a mistake. Whereas here, if I go there and then say misclick, I could always click it again to get rid of it, carry on going, press two, and we've got that sorted. So it's just a little bit more intuitive than the knife tool potentially is. Now, if I just delete that, we can have a look at our final thing that we can do when selecting vertices. I'm just gonna have to go into edge mode for this and control and B to bevel one of those edges. And then back into vertex mode. Now, quite often when 3D printing, and this is a very simplified version, but if you're gonna do things where with Boolean things together, you'll get to the point where you'll find a problem because the 3D print check doesn't like this and it will register this face here as being non-flat. Even though it is flat, it's because it's an Engon and it doesn't like that. And a lot of the time we have to do a lot of cleanup here where we're gonna select that edge there or that edge here, then select that one, then press J to join it, or we can use the two key, we now know. But there is a faster way and this works off selecting multiple vertices. So if I select that one, that one, that one, and then the one I want to connect to is the final one and press two, Smart Edge works out that it wants an edge between each of the vertices and the final one. Now, this was just an example where there was gonna be three. And I've selected these vertices because what it's gonna do is make a quad there, another quad here, another quad there, and then a final quad there. But you could do this turning into triangles as well. It depends what you want to do next. But regardless of that, it's a vastly quicker way of doing things. And if I just quickly undo that, we can start talking about what happens when we select edges and do certain things with it. So first one, if I select, let's say one edge or potentially multiple edges, this is the only two functions that don't use two by itself as well. So this is much simpler than the smart vert tool where you're using different combinations of shift, control, alt, and one. This one is the only two things that you need to use anything other than the two key. If I press shift and two, what that's gonna do is that's going to create a sharp edge, which is very useful for different functions. So that's quite nice. I'm just gonna control and Z to undo that. The other thing that can do, which is arguably more helpful, is if I press Shift 2 again, and then you select the options down here, you can set a chamfer to be the thing that happens when you select Shift and 2. And what's great about that is that you can set how much you want it to be, so you can set the thickness of this chamfer. And what's really cool about this is then I can just select, well, there, and let's say there, or there and there, and press Shift and 2 and that's gonna create a chamfer on those as well. And what's nice about this is because it is using, if I come over here, a modifier to create a chamfer, instead of actually using the equivalent of the control and B bevel, this isn't destructive, which means that I could come to the, 
let's say this edge and then shift and two and it's going to add that in nicely whereas if i'd done this destructively that bevel or that chamfer would have been an issue the other thing that's nice about it is i always know instead of using control and b and having to work it out or type it in each time i press shift and two it's going to be exactly the same thickness so that's really helpful the final thing we can do is that if we select an edge and press instead of shift and two control and two which it seems to have named a Korean bevel. I've never heard that before, but it's probably got some bases somewhere. And what that's doing is it's effectively beveling everything, but with the bevel profile shape being one. And what that's doing is that's creating edge loops effectively for that edge. So if I just undo that, get rid of that chamfer modifier and add in a subdivision surface, and then let's up that to, let's say two, Normally, if I wanted to control this, I'll be pressing Control and R, bringing in an edge loop, moving it to the side, Control and R, bringing in an edge loop, moving it up here, and trying to hope, if I want this to be perfect, that that's approximately a square. And we're gonna have to do this for every single edge that we want to be a little bit more controlled on our rounding. Now, what's nice about this is if I, for example, press A to select all of them and press Control and two, you'll notice straight away I'm creating this more rounded cube and what's great is it's taken less time and I'm doing all of the edges at the same time and they're all gonna be the same thickness. So that's really useful as a quick tool to make something like a rounded cube or just even if I wanted to select and just do this to the top edges, it's a really nice way of making sure everything is affected in exactly the same way. So I'm just gonna undo that and A and Control 2 all of those again, just so that we can look at the next point and I'm going to apply that. So now we've got this, and we've got all of our different edges. So let's go into edge mode. So the next thing that we can do with edges, if I let's say select that edge, that edge, and that edge, and I want to be clear, this only works with up to three. Don't know why they picked three, that's what they've done. If you click two, what that's gonna do is rotate those edges but keeping it connected to the vertices. So it skips from vertex to vertex. Now, what's nice about this is when it does this, it seems to attempt to keep this at quads. So you'll notice here, we've got one, two, three, four vertices. So these are quads. Again, this is a quad. Again, this is a quad. I will say if you do something like add in, for example, if I go to edge here and control E and subdivide it, it does cause some problems. So for example, if I press two on this one, it will go there, then it will go there, then it will go here, and it starts getting a little bit confused, but it is just something that we can be aware of. And then, so that's quite nice if you've been cleaning up an object and you've joined two vertices together and you realize you want to shift it around slightly. I'm gonna be honest, I don't use that one a huge amount. Now these next two are absolutely fantastic and I do use a lot. So I'm just gonna control click here, 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 and here to make an outside edge that's confining a group of faces. Now with the two tool, if you've done this and it all connects up and you press two, it automatically takes you to face mode and selects the parts that are inside that selection. So it's a really quick way of selecting a big area. And obviously in this, it's not gonna to be too difficult to do that. I could have probably done that relatively quickly, but it definitely speeds life up when you can do things, for example, selecting sharp edges and then selecting everything inside really quickly. So a great tool there. Also, if I press two and I've selected a load of faces, sort of getting ahead of myself and doing the ones with selecting faces, it goes back to selecting just the outer edge. So again, a really nice quick way of selecting just some outer edges instead of having to select edge by edge by edge. I could go to face mode, press C to select circle, go something like that, and then press two and I've got those edges, which would have taken much longer to do that edge by edge. The final one, if I just come from above and go into face mode and select some faces on both sides, let's delete those out and let's go back into edge mode and out of x-ray mode, is that if you alt select a series of edges and then I shift and alt select another series of edges and we want to join these together to effectively make a tunnel through, we could do this by going edge, and bridge edge loops requires me going all the way up here i mean it's, again it's not the longest thing but it is just quicker to be able to hit two and you've bridged those edge loops so really helpful and just a lot quicker than what we do otherwise so let's just delete that and we're going to finally talk about what happens when we're selecting faces now this again mimics the knife feature but in this instance it's the knife project feature 
Now the knife project feature is fine, but it does take a while to set up. If I wanna do something with let's say this face, and I shift and D that to be over there, then I'd have to bring this face out of the object and then set it all up, which is a bit of a pain if you know how to use knife project. What's good about this is this is all one object, so I haven't had to do any of that. And if I go into, let's say top down view, and I'm just gonna G and move this around somewhere like there. If I just hit the two key, I've done my knife project. It's from the view, cut that into this face. And if I just undo that and come back into this view again and press it again, you'll notice that you also have the option for cut through. And if I select that, now it's cut all the way through. So there we go, that is the Smart Edge. Loads of features just using the two key, depending on what you're selecting at the time. And once you get into using this and it becomes habit, it's so fast. So it's all really worth knowing. As always, I hope you found this useful. And if you aren't subscribed, do please subscribe to the channel for more of these hints and tips.